It's Sunday morning, October 16, 2022. Just putting a little breakfast together before I head out to the gym. And found something very interesting. Not, not really surprising, but I wanted to share it with all of you. Got some Farmer John bacon here. So, you know, regular pack of, of bacon, pound, pound of bacon, love my bacon. I know, I know people are gonna write in and tell me how bad it is for me. Sure it is, but I love my bacon. I'm gonna have some bacon this morning. But what's really interesting here is on the back of the Farmer John packet package of bacon is a security sensor. Look at that. So now they're putting security sensors on packages of bacon at the grocery store. This is from Albertsons. So this is telling all of us and reminding all of us that things are getting really, really bad, that a theft is getting really, really bad, and people are stealing food now. And they've probably been stealing food for quite a while with the uh, massive increase in prices because of inflation. And this is gonna get much, much worse. You know, we're gonna see a time, I'm sure, where you're gonna see sensors on all meat at every grocery store. Walmart's already been doing that for a while. Now Albertsons here in my area putting sensors on bacon. And uh, you're gonna see uh, the, butch the butcher department probably behind lock and key, uh, probably behind, behind a, 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 a chain link fence or bars because they're gonna have so many people wanting to steal steak and hamburger and things of that nature. So uh, I'm sure that uh, these stores are seeing a huge, huge spike uh, in shoplifting. And what are they going for? They're gonna go for, for meat, poultry, fish. And so I think it's only a matter of time before these butcher departments, everything is just behind lock and key. And uh, you're just not gonna be able to walk in and go, oh, give me a pound of that, you know, because everything's gonna be so secure that uh, uh, it's not gonna be that easy. It's uh, really a, a crazy time where, where so much is happening and putting sensors on packages of bacon, uh, pack uh, sensors at Walmart on all their steaks. And it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how bad it gets to where maybe the butcher department at your local grocery store is just completely shut down. Everything is behind lock and key with a sensor on it. And you're gonna to have to ask somebody uh, to come unlock uh, the case so you can get a porterhouse or a pound of hamburger. That's where it's all going. But uh, this isn't uh, uh, the 1980s, the 1990s. Uh, things are definitely changing, and it's uh, going to continue to change, and not for the best, ladies and gentlemen. So I just want to point that out this morning as I'm making some breakfast. Just really a sad state of affairs when you look at uh, what is happening, uh, and what is about to happen is even more shocking. So just heading over to the gym, and on my way, there's a, a big RV dealership uh, out here in the desert, and I wanted to stop by on the way. I filmed this uh, uh, dealership in the past, but I wanted to film it again today because there is a noticeable increase in inventory uh, at this dealership, and I'm gonna show that to you today and take a couple minutes and, and share this with you and a few articles. Americans are getting poor. Price inflation grew faster than wages again in September. This was an article uh, on the hedge uh, yesterday. Wages uh, in America are up 4.92% year over year, but inflation is up 8.2% year over year. And this is going to create more demand destruction across the board. And I thought today uh, this would be a good example to prove that demand destruction because I want you to take a look at the multi-millions of dollars of inventory here just sitting here in piles. They could not stick another RV uh, on the lot, another fifth wheeler on the lot. Uh, they are stacked with uh, a lot of inventory here. And this is going to cause more demand destruction as wages get decimated as the economy continues to get crushed by inflation and interest rate hikes. If you need to borrow money to finance a vehicle like this, which most people do, uh, it is going to be a, a fortune. And you can see now that these interest rate hikes and the economy are now taking a toll 
in the sale of, of cars, new and used, and RVs. And the scary thing is, the scary thing is, is the banks over the past couple of years that just made these outrageous loan to value uh, uh, loans and these uh, inflated numbers of, of uh, that, that, that we saw in cars, and RVs and boats, they're gonna absolutely get decimated because of these terrible loans that they made on vehicles like this. Now, these vehicle prices are gonna have to come down I've noticed a lot of these vehicles are on sale and as inventory piles up, just like we're going to see in housing, now the amount of inventory in housing is piling up. You're going to see prices coming down and a dealer like this, he has no choice but to start, you know, putting these vehicles on sale and discounting them in order to move them because there just is not enough buyers to come in and absorb this inventory. So I wanted to point that out. We'll walk uh, around the we'll walk around the lot here a little bit, but another article I wanted to share with all of you I was reading this weekend. One in four Americans to skip Thanksgiving to save money. Will you be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving this year or will you be skipping it? I I fortunately will be celebrating it. But there 25% of this country will not because they need to save money. This to me is another financial indicator of how bad things are getting. I, I Tell me the last time you ever heard something like this or saw anything like this where 25% of that country is not gonna celebrate Thanksgiving. It's unheard of. But again, it's another indication of how financially stressed uh, the average American is. And, and how, uh, how stressed do you think these dealers are in the RV business? I mean, I don't know if you can see this. I'll see if I can zoom in here for you. Uh, but take a look how deep these RVs go. And just think about, you know, the amount of uh, inventory they have here and the cost to carry this inventory. I mean, it's unbelievable when you think about it. I mean, there's millions, millions of dollars of inventory. Look how beautiful that is. Absolutely beautiful. And look, we got a couple people showed up in the lot. Maybe gonna kick some tires, that's good. Uh, but let's keep walking here and I'll keep showing you what's happening right out here on the uh, RV lots. Now, as I, as I walk down the sidewalk here, another article, Zelensky thanks America for another $725 million security and aid package. Now, I don't get political on this channel, but I do get very financial, we talk economics, we talk about money, we talk about the standard of living. This bothers me when we have people sleeping on the streets of America, we have people sleeping in their cars, 20 million households cannot pay utility bills, people are losing their automobiles to the repo man, and we have 25% of this country that is not going to celebrate Thanksgiving because they need to save money in order to make the car payment or the utility payment. Yet, we're gonna throw out another $725 million for security and aid package to Ukraine after the tens of billions of dollars we've already sent there. This, um, this bothers me quite a bit. When we're broke and we don't have money, uh, we have major inflation now in America, we have people losing everything, and yet we are printing and borrowing money to send over to other countries. That's a big problem. And this is gonna to continue to cause more inflation. While the Fed continues to raise rates, we have a government that can't stop spending. It's gonna be a big, big problem. And, it, and, and this is why we're not seeing inflation come down. While the Fed continues to raise rates, uh, not tightening that balance sheet like they said they would, and then we have a government sending tens of billions of dollars over to other countries and sending money uh, to all kinds of special interests and whatnot. So I don't know how you ever get inflation under control, and it just tells you you and I to get ready because it's gonna get much worse. And I was reading an article, let me, let me just check, point this out to you real quick. A lot of vehicles. Reading an article uh, this morning on The Hedge, uh, Catherine Austin Fitz says this, what is coming to the economy is pain and lots of it. I think that there's going that they're going to keep raising rates. I think that they will keep driving up the dollar. They have the entire frontier market and emerging markets 
in a bear trap. And this is a lot of power, ladies and gentlemen. We are looking at global control, uh, the weaponization of the US dollar. The Fed is going to keep doing this for some time. They don't mind collapsing your business, any small business, uh, or the middle class. And when you shut down an entire economy for a year, that's a, that tells you right there that they don't, they don't mind destroying small business or middle class because you would have never shut down an entire economy for a year if you did mind destroying small business and middle class. They are re-engineering the government system of planet Earth. They now must protect the dollar, the world reserve currency, because that's the power. That's where they get all their power. They can print money out of thin air, start, start wars, control other markets, control other countries literally control the world. And so now they cannot allow the dollar to get weak. They're going to do the opposite. They're going to try to make it super, super strong. Um, think about this. If they cannot protect the US dollar, China and Russia know that this is their chance. And I do believe that Russia and China are going to be the next world superpower, especially China. And I think that no matter what the Fed does now, weaponizing the dollar, trying to strengthen the dollar, you can strengthen the dollar, but we all know the dollar's lost 97% of its purchasing power. So I don't know how you how you, anybody considers the dollar so strong. Might be It might be the, the least sickest puppy in the litter, but like all fiat currencies, they're all going to die. So as I uh, come to you today from the desert, take a look at what's happening to this small business. You wanna borrow money? It's gonna cost a lot more. Think about, I mean, each one of these vehicles is hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you need to finance one of these vehicles, I don't know what uh, the rate is, uh, what the interest rate is on a vehicle uh, like this, but I know that it's a lot more today than it was in January, and it's a lot more today than it was a year ago and I do know that there literally is nobody walking around here. In fact, I thought the place was closed till I saw two people walk around and, and look at uh, one of the vehicles. But it's at about 85 degrees today. Absolutely beautiful, stunning day in the desert. And nobody is out looking at RVs because the average American now is pulling back. The, think about the used RV market. How many of these things are going up for sale? And I've been by so many of these RV lots. Take a look how deep, how deep it goes. One, two, three, there's 10, like 10 fifth wheels, 10 fifth wheelers right there in a row. And then you have this thing. I mean, these are very, very expensive. And then we have more across the street. So we'll hop over there. This just look like campers. So we'll take a look. But yeah, you got fifth, fifth wheelers and, over here, big RVs, high-end stuff, and there's nobody here even looking. So I'm gonna hop across the street here for you. You know, I, I think one of the best ways to really get a, a temperature gauge on what's happening in the economy is just to walk around and, you know, check it out. What's happening at the car lots? What's happening at the RV lots? What's happening at the, the boat lots? What's happening at your local malls? What's happening with the local restaurants. I don't need uh, a Jamie Dimon or a big bank to tell me what's happening in the economy. I don't need an economist. I don't need anybody on television. I can just take uh, a few minutes out of my day and just walk around and I can tell you that something is very wrong. There's piles of these things, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll walk around here and just show you what's going on. And, and there's nobody here. There's nobody here piles of this stuff so these are all campers they do have some rvs over here and i have noticed a lot of uh a lot of red tag sales on some of the windows i'll see if i can point some of them out but i mean look at all, look at the inventory you think on a nice beautiful day today if the economy was really booming the consumer was so strong they'd be coming out here oh, here's one right here they're coming out here looking at the red tag sale so this one was fifty seven thousand dollars 
marked down to 45.9. So it's about $12,000 off. Here's another one right here, another red tag. This one's 44.5, was 56. There's $12,000 off. And nobody's uh, out here kicking tires. There's another red tag right there. It's just one after another. Another red, red tag on this one. Another red tag right there. So it just goes on and on and on. So I wanted to uh, just take a couple minutes on the way to the gym and uh, pull over and show you uh, the inventory here. Last time I shot a video here, the inventory was nothing near what it is now. And so we can see now the effect uh, that inflation is taking, the toll, and uh, the interest rates going up, the toll that, that that is taking now because people just cannot borrow money uh, as cheaply as they once did. And, and I think people now are beginning to um, cut out the risk. Like, you know, maybe we shouldn't buy that boat. Maybe we shouldn't buy that RV because what if one of us loses a job? What if I lose my job? What if I keep losing in the stock market? What if I keep losing my 401k? I can lose it all. So do I need, you know, a three, four, five hundred thousand dollar RV? Look at this one. It was four seventy, now four oh seven. So sixty-three thousand dollars off on this one. Save sixty-three thousand dollars. And unfortunately, it's probably not going to be enough. And we're gonna see the same thing in the housing market, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think that this is just a really good barometer of what's coming for housing. I think the auto market and RV market are six to 12 months ahead of housing, but this is coming. But these discounts that we're seeing, these, this, this is early in the game. Just think like less than a year ago, things were fine, things were booming. How quickly now things are spiraling out of control. And this is just the beginning. 60,000 off here, 60,000 off there, but it's just the beginning. We're gonna see major, major uh, reductions in the prices of cars, RVs, and homes. In fact, we're gonna see, I think, major deflation at some point uh, hitting America. And if you have cash, if you have hard assets, you're gonna capitalize on this stuff. And yet it's shocking that, you know, $6.40 on average here in California for gas, and People are driving around like there's no tomorrow, but we know that most people now are using credit cards in order to do this, to survive, put gas in the car, pay the utilities. And it's gonna end one of two ways for most people. One way is they're gonna lose their job and it's game over. The other way is the credit cards reach the limit and it's game over. And people right now, if you're out there spending money, if you're out there ignoring the dangers of this economy, if you're ignoring reality, you're playing with fire. You really are. You are really playing with fire. And I pray that you wake up and prepare. And, you know, for so many people, it's already too late because they're so broke. They've lost the job. They've lost the car. They've lost everything and there's no way to recover at this point. And I think the only thing for those people right now that my advice today on this Sunday is pray. You gotta get close to God because you're gonna need a miracle. You're gonna need a miracle. No job, no car, no cash reserve, no assets, but a lot of debt. How do you, how do you recover? And again, I don't have the answer other than you better pray to God for a miracle because that's what it's gonna take 
in order to get out of the hole that you're in. And this is why I've been making these videos for a few years, warning of this economic avalanche that has taken years for these bubbles to inflate to this magnitude. You know, people just thought it would be, oh, you know, it'll be over in a year. No, it, bubbles of this magnitude, an avalanche this big, takes years to build up. And most people don't understand economies, they don't understand math, they don't understand money, and they don't understand collapses, uh, recessions, depressions, and I'm by far no economist. But I do understand that bubbles don't form and pop overnight, especially big ones. They take years. It takes years of reckless money printing, borrowing, and spending to get to a point like this. But it's not going to take years when it bursts. This thing will accelerate so fast, people, their heads are going to spin. They're not going to know what to do. They're going to go into shock. Uh, it's going to be a really, really bad time uh, in America. You all need to avoid that. And the way to do it right now is stop buying dumb stuff. Make sure you have assets. Make sure you have cash reserve. Make sure you get your debts paid off ASAP or at least to a point where you can manage them. You do not want to be heading into this depression. You do not want to be in this today, this recession right now with debt, especially with prices of everything going up. How are you going to pay the debt back when you're paying $7 for a gallon of gas? You're paying you know, $7 for a box of cereal, $5 for a loaf of bread and everything climbing. But look, it's going to continue to get worse. Prices are going up. Gasoline is going to go up. That's going to be the next shoe to drop. Uh, people, I, I think like we're going to see gas prices uh, go to go to levels we've never ever thought humanly possible. I think you know we will see eight dollar gas here in California again, and it's going to go up across the country, and that's going to take a toll again on the average American. If you have debt, how do you get out of this debt when everything, food, energy, gasoline, health insurance, car insurance, everything, uh, rent, everything is going up? You can't because you're just fighting day to day to stay alive and survive. So if you can, if you can, if you have the means, you got the side hustles going on, you have the job right now, use some self-control and get that debt paid off and you will thank God that you did, especially when it gets really, really bad out here. You're gonna thank God you don't have debt because the people with debt, the people that own these things, and, they've been fi and they're financing these things for 10 years or whatever, and they're financing a car for seven, eight, 10 years, those are the first ones to go. They're the first people. They're the first people to lose it all. They get evicted, they lose their homes, they're done. You do not wanna be one of those people. This is the time to live below your means right now. There'll be plenty of time to buy RVs, boats, cars, and all, all that stuff. This is not the time to do it, ladies and gentlemen. Have a great Sunday. Uh, I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon. Please share this video. Please like it, and please uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You want to support the channel, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And again, God bless you all, and I look forward to speaking with all of you very, very soon.